You want to know my favourite thing about animation? It's that it can make the unbelievable believable. If you set the rules of your world and you abide by them, you can bring anyone along for the journey and have them believe your world. This is the beauty of storytelling in general, but there's a certain magic that comes with animated stories, especially interactive animated stories. Welcome to Video Game Animation Study. I'm Dan, and this is the animation of Greece. Greece, a recently released 2D puzzle platformer, has an incredibly strong visual identity, and this makes it easy for everything in the game to feel consistent and real to that world. The heavy subject matter of the game is fuel for the way the game looks and feels. Light and dark pastel colours and watercolour textures allow for this playful use of lighting, allowing bright hues to bleed into darker colours, giving the impression of a lens flare. Much in the same way Limbo did a decade earlier, this allows for clever and skillful use of aesthetic design to help feed the game design, such as helpful hints being slightly doused in a fog so that the contrast of the object is enriched, allowing for easier observation. This style of design is even prettier in Greece, where the majority of the landscape can be constructed merely of geometric shapes, making possibilities for design endless. Video games, particularly 2D platformers in this case, rely on this visual language and rely on you being able to understand it. If the stage is lighter than the background or foreground, you can probably trust that this is solid enough to walk on, and thus you can see the stage layout without it being too in your face and gamey. Aesthetics like this allow you to be more poetic with your design, and this game truly is poetic and this visual identity feeds back into themes and the story. So how does this translate into the animation? There's something I'd like to quickly address before getting onto Greece's loveliness, and that's frame rates. Traditional animated movies from the early 1900s generally stuck to 12 or 24 frames per second, but as industries changed with progressing technologies, so did the art and processes that came with it. Time and financial constraints in the 60s led to the limited animation movement, most commonly associated with American studios like Hanna-Barbera and Japanese animation. This technique would push the frames per second down to below 12, sometimes as low as maybe 4 or 6. They'd have one single element be moving on screen while everything else was static, or they'd reuse certain animations. Modern technological approaches to animation aim for a certain amount of fidelity and style, with games in particular settling in around 30 frames per second, while many are aiming to hit 60 frames per second, allowing for very crisp responsiveness and fluid feedback, which is important if you want your game to flow nicely and feel solid. So within this total span of anywhere from 4 frames per second to 60 frames per second, where is it that animation feels magic? Where's that sweet spot where the frame rate is slower than your real world vision, but not so slow that you begin to see each frame clearly and thus breaking your reality? Personally, and quite commonly, I feel that the magical but believable frame rate settles nicely at around 12 to 24 frames per second. Anything lower and I feel it begins to lose its grip on handling believable movement, and anything more and it begins to feel more like emulating real world motion. 12 to 24 is where Greece seems to settle nicely. What's important to remember is that while Greece creates action in that golden section of frame rates, it creates motion at 60 frames per second. So we actually have a mixture of frame rates here 12 to 24 for the actions and animations, and 60 for the actual on screen player and camera movement. You can notice this the most when your digital fairy friends are following you as they have a fixed, almost predetermined movement which is locked at a much lower frame rate than the on-screen movement of your player character. 12 to 24 frames per second is where Greece has an extra advantage in drawing you into its world. So, with its art style and frame rate established, let's have a look at some of those lovely smooth actions that take place in Greece. The character design, and indeed the theme of this game, is fragile, delicate, and gentle, 
So we have a character that has incredibly thin arms and legs and a gentle flowing dress, navigating fine-lined crumbling structures, rich and beautiful forests, ethereal ice caves, ambient underwater networks, and a sort of technological town of sorts. Fabric is a notoriously difficult thing to nail in both 2D and 3D animation, but getting it right results in this almost hypnotic motion, and it works particularly well here in Greece, further reinforcing that delicate and fragile theme. It works nicely in the actions you perform, allowing good use of overlapping, secondary action, and follow through, all techniques to keep your animation flowing smoothly and helping with any sorts of transitioning movements and such. The dress is the source of your powers, so while it isn't particularly detailed, its identity as a silhouette makes it easy, and more importantly, believable, for it to shift shapes. It's just a black piece of fabric, so when it acts as wings, a weighted block, or an underwater jellyfish, it's merely changing shape from one silhouette to another, and this makes it fun to look at when animated. This is what I mean by making the unbelievable believable. What I like in particular about the run cycle, and many of the looping animations, is that even though it looks like a small loop of two steps, it actually has a few phases of looping, allowing her dress to do this much slower loop of flowing up as she runs. Careful study will reveal this little detail in a few other animations as well. This flapping butterfly, for example, may look like one loop, but there is in fact three loops going on, each differing slightly with the amount of inky splashes that fling off. Things like this, where a simple loop could have sufficed, show the amount of hidden detail which is right there in front of you. Perhaps it's a notion that the longer you're around something, or the more time you spend with someone, the more you notice and appreciate. For instance, these trees have a different animation for appearing to disappearing. They could have very easily just reused that one animation in reverse, but instead decided to do two separate ones, only subtly different to one another. I do enjoy this line boil when animating too, it gives it a real human touch. It wouldn't feel right if I didn't mention the lovely dust clouds when you run, jump and land. I honestly don't know why I love them so much. It just gives the stage platform a bit of life, like it has a history and is a bit warm. And the water splashes look brilliant. They've got a really nice shape to them and they linger on for just the right amount of time. Again, kind of reinforcing this sort of unbelievable but believable world. Another thing I like about the character is how there are turning animations. It's really not often characters are given a noticeable turning animation, particularly in side-scrolling games. Sometimes they're there, like in Super Metroid, but they're pretty quick, because the nature of the game design dictates how quickly it needs to be, whereas a much slower paced and threat-free game like Grease can get away with more elaborate animations. For instance, I feel this animation is one that not many people will see because it's not really clear that you can walk if you want to, so the change from walking to running is really nice. When all these elements play together, it results in this incredibly smooth, dynamic and believable flow. Important things when you're trying to tell a story. In contrast to the light and delicate movements of your gentle character and her surroundings, is the big, menacing, inky beast with a heavy, oppressing appearance. Without revealing too much about the intended message and story of Greece, it's safe to say that each form this black menace takes is representative of an emotional state. Its heavy and menacing appearance is designed to evoke a feeling of brooding turmoil. Despite its negative connotations, it doesn't mean that this beast can't look beautifully animated. Much like Grease's dress, which can shapeshift, so too can this ominous mass. Its first appearance as a bird is formed through this ink and water effect, tapering off like smoke. Then we have more traditional bird-like movements, like snappy head twitches, followed by this brilliantly exaggerated and distorted anticipation into a surreal scream. It seems whenever this beast moves, it creates these gaping distortions, allowing for some more beautiful lingering animation with this inky, smoky effect. When the bird gets desperate a little bit later on, it pushes this exaggeration to the extreme and it goes really bendy and kind of tapery, it's brilliant. And this design continues throughout its forms, from bird to barrier to eel to human. The eel is a lot of fun to watch, it's got a lot of the same inky, 
kind of look as the bird and when it sort of splits off into two and then into sort of these infinite little eels it's it's great it's kind of it's, it's menacing and sinister but just so nice to look at the human face in particular is quite unsettling representing this almost zombie-like appearance complete with dripping oily flesh in the end, this ocean-sized gloop begins to envelop the statue that you've been encountering throughout the game, and it ends up taking you over in a positive way of acceptance. And we get this lovely little scene of Grease doing a gentle side-to-side -side sway. Gah, man, just go play this game. I'll well up if I have to study this section anymore. Ultimately, Grease looks and feels like a cartoon, but one of those more grown-up cartoons you watched as a kid, with heavier subject matter still given this magical fairy tale like glaze that kept you engaged. It's incredibly important that Grease works on all these levels, because the message it delivers is done tastefully and carefully. Some of the best messages can be delivered subtly, especially through the guise of animation, and especially topics which can be difficult to bring up. There's plenty of other tiny little lovely bits of animation in this game as well. I mean, just take a look at these lovely little bits here. making the unbelievable believable through magical visual storytelling. Well done, Reese. Oh, and check out this little dude I've got to mention. If there's not some sort of plushie or figurine of this dude in the next year, I'll be mad. He's cute as hell. Before I log off for Christmas, get it? Oh, Christmas. I just want to say a huge thank you to all my subscribers, all my regular commenters and fans, and to my financiers, my patrons. You're the ones that are making this possible. You're the ones that keep the dream alive from the morning, past the evening, to the end of the light. That's Brimble of Asher, sorry. But I really appreciate everyone's support. I really couldn't do it without all of you. Also, please research Article 13 because it could spell the end of how I and nearly every other YouTuber, especially in the EU, currently make our videos. Merry Christmas, everyone, and I'll see you in the new year. Thank you.